Hello. In this video, we're going to continue to explore methods. Now, we've talked about the fact that there's two kind of larger classifications of methods. Methods that return a value and methods that don't. We're interested in this video in exploring methods that return something. And when you have a method that returns something, you need to include what's called a return statement. A return statement is, is, the, is the equivalence of, of me giving something back, some piece of information. So if someone gave me two numbers, I would return perhaps the sum of it or the product of it. Whatever it is I was designed to calculate. So there's two um, rules that we want to start with and we want to remember. The first one is we must have at least one return statement in, in the method. The second one is multiple return statements are allowed as long as all return statements are reachable. And we'll look at more detail. We'll look in more detail of, of what this means in our example. So in this video, I'm going to write a method. We'll take two string parameters and return the larger string. So again, this is method is not necessarily a, a, a realistic example of, of where we use it because it is this is a, a little bit of a simple algorithm. However, that being said, it, it does illustrate um, the ideas nicely. So again, at this point, all methods are start with the word public static. These are called modifiers. Um, they tell the, the, the program how to interpret the specific method. Um, if you're in my grade 11 computer science course, we're not particularly interested in what these mean yet, um, but we will explore them in more detail later. But I would recommend that you understand the word public and static are what are called modifiers. And they always need to be there for our, our examples in our class. Um, the next is the return type. So this is what is returned from the method. So if this method will take two string parameters and return the larger string, we need to return a string. So I'll put the word string there. The next part in the method header is the name of the method. So remember, it's really important to pick a name that makes sense. So in this case, I'm finding the largest string, so I'm going to call my method find largest. And we, we follow the same naming convention that variables use where it always starts with a small case letter, and any subsequent word is capitalized. Then we open up our parentheses, and inside of parentheses, we say our parameters. The parameters are, are what the method needs to function. And in this case, if we're checking between two strings, which is the largest, I need two strings. And we'll call one string A, and we'll call the second string B. Then I open, I come down here, is a end find largest. Now you'll notice right away that I already have an error here. And if we just hover over it, you'll see that it tells you the method must return a result of type string. So what this is saying is this is saying you have this method that was returning a string, but there's no return statement. So if right here I just put return B, you'll see that problem will correct itself. And so what this now means is that this method always returns whatever string variable b is. So if I come up into my main and I invoke my method, and we invoke our method by by typing it in, um, whatever it's sent, regardless, is going to return the value b. So let's look at that. So I'm going to make a string variable called temp, and I'm going to set it equal to find largest, and then I'm going to pass it the word the and fish. So we can tell from this is this is an assignment statement um, where we're declaring a string. So we first look at the right hand side. Always look at the right hand side of the assignment statement first and we see that this is invoking the method find largest. And it's the arguments that are being put into the method are the and fish. So what happens is when the program hits this line it, it sees the word finds largest and so it jumps down to this method down here and inside string A it puts the word the and inside string B it puts the word fish. So then it enters the method and all it has right now is return B. So that means it takes whatever va the variable B is and then spits it out. So if up here I do system.out.println the larger word is and then I write temp and I run this I'm going to get the larger word is fish. Even if I switch these, if I put fish and the, even if I switch these, I'm always going to get that second argument. 
the that's passed in. So of course down here we now want to write a little bit of logic. So we need to check the size of the strings. And one thing we've kind of touched on in class is that the that string string variables have a large number of predefined methods that do stuff for us. And one of them is the length method. Length returns the length of the string. So if I put an if statement here, I say if a dot, and we get all our methods pop up, which is really nice. And I come down here and I see length. And so again, when we look at the built-in method for the string class, we see the name is length. It returns an integer, and it has no parameters. Um, so again, the name is length. It returns an integer, and there's no parameters, meaning there's nothing inside the parentheses, so I don't have to pass it anything. So if I go a, if a dot length is greater than b dot length, then I'm going to return a. Else, I'm going to return b. And there's my method. So now, what happens is when it goes into this, when it goes into this, oh, and you'll see, I've made my classic mistake. My fingers type, it seems to be the way I type, that I always mix up the t and the h in length. That's better. So if I run this program now, it's going to invoke the method find largest, which is here. The arguments are fish and the. So it's going to jump down to this method. It's going to put the word fish in A. It's going to put the word the in B. And then it's going to run through the logic. So if A dot length, meaning the length of A, is greater than the length of B, which is right here, it's going to return A. Important thing to note, if this line is reached, the method stops. That's it. It doesn't do anything else past it. And then we have else, it returns b. So if we run this now, we get the larger word is fish. If I come up here and I switch them, I put the, I put fish, the larger word is fish. Okay. Now let's talk about a couple little things that are important to know that help develop good programming techniques. The first thing is that with our logic here, again, if, if a dot length is smaller than b dot length, then b has to be the, the, the larger of the two words. Okay? So here, where we typically put an else statement, I could actually not put any condition whatsoever, and I could simply put return b, because we know that if this is not true, then this has to be the case. Of course, I'm, I'm assuming that the, the words aren't the same length for the sake of this discussion, but that could be an interesting little consideration to put in there. The second thing that, that we can talk about in terms of making this a bit more efficient is notice here how I declare a string variable called temp and then I invoke the method find largest. So we should be comfortable with that word invoke, meaning call. Um, I can actually simplify this quite a bit. I can remove that line and I can invoke a method at any point. I can actually invoke it right there. So by invoking it at this point right here, let's make this a little bit smaller, what happens is it's going to see this, this print output to the screen line, but because this method is invoked in that inside this, this line, it's actually going to invoke the method first, then print out the statement. So we get the same thing. So let's just talk about um, one, I want to talk before I wrap up here about this one error right here, an unreachable return statement. Notice if I go after this return B and I put return A, I'm going to get an error. This is what is called an unreachable return statement. And in fact, you can think about it as unreachable code, and you'll see here is that's what the error is notating. Unreachable code means that code will never be reached, and the compiler knows this, so it tells you that. So since return b here is stated on its own, anything after this statement here is, is irrelevant. It's never actually going to be executed. And so watch for that. That is a mistake that often happens when we're writing programs, is we end up writing code that is unreachable. I hope this video helped.